I'm Noah from American Trucks, and today we're taking a look at the Barricade Modular Extreme Heavy Duty Brush Guard for the 15 to 20 F-150, excluding the Raptor. Now, if your truck is in need of some big time protection in terms of the front end because of deer on the road or just lots of brush on the trail, then this brush guard from Barricade will really be a great fit for you. Now, right off the bat, I'm gonna admit that this thing does look really cool. Yes, it serves a purpose, but if you're going for a very aggressive off-road look for your F-150, then this really will fit the bill. Regardless of which reason you buy it for, long story short is that it is seriously beefy and it will keep the front end of your truck intact when you make contact with things in your way. Now it does come in gloss black, just like you see here. And in the front grill area, there's also this mesh here that's gonna keep your grill safe from smaller debris that can fly up as well. Now this does just bolt right on over your factory bumper as well, which is a great feature. There's no cutting or modification required. And since it is just an add-on, you don't need to ditch the factory front bumper at all like you'll see with some other products. Now the whole idea is protection rather than replacement. So like I said, this is pretty beefy. Now, of course, we are looking at an all steel construction and the tubes here that cover the headlight area are actually two inches in diameter. Now that's a pretty serious size to be seen on a brush guard. Then everything is finished with a black powder coat. Powder coat is definitely one of the strongest finishes you can put on something. It's actually sprayed on dry in a powder form and then baked in essentially a huge oven and cured. Now, if you're looking for something that is all around durable from the steel construction to the coating that it's covered in, then this is your piece. Okay, so how much is this guy going to set you back? Now, this is around 650 bucks, which is cheaper than a full bumper for sure. And one of the advantages of getting an add-on to a bumper like a brush guard or even maybe a stubby bumper from Barricade is that you aren't paying for nearly as much steel and the weight and the cost are kept down. We are looking at an installation time of around an hour and an install difficulty right at one out of three wrenches. This guy should be pretty darn easy to get bolted up, especially if you've got a friend to give you a hand and hold it. One last thing, just some food for thought before you buy. This brush guard will interfere with the front parking sensors and forward collision warning systems if your truck is equipped with them because, well, there's kind of a big thing in front of them. Without further ado, let's head over to the install bay and get this brush guard installed on our F-150. The tools you'll need for this project are a half inch drive impact gun or a half inch drive ratchet, a 3 8 drive impact gun and or a 3 8 drive ratchet, a half inch socket, an 11 16 socket, an 18 millimeter socket. In the short version, you'll also need a 13 millimeter, a 15 millimeter, a 17 millimeter, an 18 millimeter, and a 21 millimeter deep impact sockets, along with a half inch ratchet wrench a 5 8 ratchet wrench, an 11 16 wrench, and a trim puller. Hi everyone, today we're installing a brush guard on our F-150. But before we do that, let's watch a quick video on how to uninstall the front bumper and tow hooks if you have them on your truck. We'll see you right back here. All right, first things first, grab a plastic panel removal tool, go to your factory bumper, and you're gonna remove these two plastic trim pieces right above your tow hooks. Don't use anything metal because it can scratch your paint and you need to go right up against that to pry this guy off. You want to have a hand there to catch it though to make sure it doesn't come right off. All right, once you pry in there, just peel off. You can see there's just plastic clips and metal clips holding this guy on. Do the same thing on the other side. Now once you have that removed, you're exposing two 21 millimeter nuts on these threaded studs here on both sides. We're not going to completely remove them, we're just going to loosen them up so that we can get them off by hand. Grab your 21 deep socket, grab an extension and an impact gun or a ratchet and loosen them up. All right, so we got that back all the way off. I'm just gonna keep it on a couple of threads. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, so at this point, you're crawling under the front end of the truck and you're gonna unplug the factory master harness for the fog lights. Now that's directly above the frame here and it may be attached to the frame itself, but you can just pull that plastic clip off like I have here. What you're gonna do is just flip it over you're gonna pinch and disconnect. 
That way the fog lights are free and won't tug on this harness attached to the vehicle. All right, now you have to actually unplug the back of the fog light harness. Now, it's really difficult to get to from underneath of the truck due to it being really close to the frame. So I'm actually gonna go into our wheel well here on our passenger side and then repeat on the other side. There's two five and a half millimeter bolts, believe it or not. I have a quarter inch ratchet and a short five and a half socket. Get these two out of the way. You can peel that trim back enough in the wheel well liner to get to the back of the fog light, which is like right here. All right, I'm gonna do the other one, and we'll peel it back. At this point, you're basically gonna peel this guy back, and you can actually just bend it right behind the tire, especially if you have one of these larger tires like we have here. And then right there, you'll see the fog light connector right where my fingertip is here. All right, so it's got this blue connector on it, and you're basically gonna peel back on the black, and I know that's tough to see here, right at my fingertip, and disconnect that so it falls right off. Repeat on the other side. Next step, we have to remove the third 21 millimeter nut from underneath of the truck connecting it to the frame. It's basically right where the first two were, but on the opposite side on the inside of the truck. So we're crawling underneath the front end. I got my 21 socket. Now keep in mind, guys, as you remove these two last ones, one on each side, the bumper is going to start coming down. That's why we left the first two nuts loose so that it can catch it and it's not going to come down on top of us. All right, so grab your 21 deep socket and extension and get these off. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna repeat that process on the other side. What you're seeing now is the front side view of that same bolt on the driver's side. All right, at this point, you're basically gonna support the front bumper and remove the four 21 millimeter nuts that we left on just a couple of threads. Keep in mind, as you remove these guys, it's gonna start coming off. All right, all four are off. Let's pull this guy out of position. And with everything disconnected, set it aside. All right, so next up we have to remove our factory tow hooks. Grab a 15 socket and an impact gun or ratchet, go underneath and take those two bolts out. Pull that bolt plate out as well. Same thing on the other side. All right, so now we have to take off the factory double bolt plate by pulling off these retainer pieces of plastic that hold them on. And you're basically gonna pull it out. They're all in one piece, just like that. I'm just gonna put the plastic things back on so we don't lose them. Do the same thing on the other side. Before we can actually start assembling our brush guard, there's a few things we need to take care of first, such as installing these foam pads on the ends of the center section, on the push bars, and also on the headlight guards. By the way, these are side specific, so you need to be very, very careful of when you go to put these on. Make sure all the holes line up. There are some pre-cut holes in these pads. If you just push them out, you'll see. So as you can see, I've removed the, the cutouts from the pad, and if I lay it on top of the center section of our brush bar, you'll see that the, the holes all line up perfectly. So that's what we wanna see. Now before we actually take the backing off of the pad, I highly recommend that you use some rubbing alcohol on a clean cloth and just wipe that down. Make sure that there's no leftover residue from the manufacturing or anything that got contaminated during shipping, anything like that. Just make sure that it's a clean surface. And then we can go ahead and apply our pad. Now that our surface is clean, we can go ahead and remove the backing off of our pad. and then very carefully lay it over the top of our piece, making sure that the holes line up and that it's smooth. And just kind of 
run your hand over it, press it down, make sure that it sticks good. Now we'll go ahead and flip this over and do the other end as well. Now, as you can see on this push bar here, there is some residue, something got left on there, maybe from shipping or whatever. This is why we clean it off with the alcohol. That way there's no contamination and our pad will stick like it's supposed to. So again, remove all the cutouts. Make sure before you remove the pad that you have the correct side and then go ahead and remove the backing and apply it. All right, now we'll go ahead and get the next piece. As you can see, this pad here does have a slightly different irregular angle on it. That's also to help you match it up to the right side of the crossbar. So once you've got your holes lined up and the angles are right, you know you've got the right pad. Now we'll do the other side. And now we're ready to start assembling. All right, now that we've got all of our pads installed, we're ready to go ahead and hook this all up together. To do that, we're gonna be using these M8 by 30 millimeter long bolts with flat washers on one side, flat washer on the other side, and a nylock nut to hold it all together. So to put this together, we're gonna to take one of our headlight guards, put the bolt through one side, and then through the push bar, and then into the center crossbar. Now we've kind of figured out that one of the easiest ways to put this together is basically to stand it up upside down. That way you can hold it together while you're putting the bolts through. So we're actually on the passenger side here. So we're gonna use our bolt with our washer on it. Stick it in through the hole. Get everything lined up. and get our first bolt through. Put our flat washer on the other side. Now we'll go ahead and attach our headlight guard to our push bar using our bolt and the flat washer and then a flat washer and the nylock nut on the other side. And then we'll just move on down the line. With the same process, a flat washer on each side and then the nylock nut. Now once you've got all four bolts and nuts on this side done, you can go ahead and repeat that process for the other side. All right, now that we've got both of our headlight guards installed and both of our push bars installed, we can go ahead and connect this lower crossbar, making sure, of course, that the angle of this faces away from the truck. So we'll go ahead and slide this into place here. And just like before, one of our bolts with the flat washer on it, on each hole, and then a flat washer, and a nylock nut on the other side. Now you can go ahead and repeat that same process for the other side as well. Now with our brush guard fully assembled, we can go ahead and tighten down all of the nuts on the bolts that we've got in here. 
So we're gonna use a half inch socket and a half inch wrench and just go through and tighten everything down. Now we'll get the two at the bottom for our crossbar. And now you can repeat that process for the other side as well. Our next step is gonna be installing these upper support brackets on the back of the bumper. Now on the back of the bumper, above this mounting bracket here, there's one bolt right in the middle. It's a 13 millimeter bolt we'll need to take off. And then you'll need, depending on the year of your truck, will depend on which of these brackets you actually install. Now, as you can tell, we have one that's longer than the other. The longer one is for the 18 to 20, and the shorter one is for the 15 to 17. So ours is an 18, so we're gonna be using the longer bracket. So unfortunately, we're gonna to have to remove this entire bracket here because there's a spring clip nut behind this one here that has to come out for the new bolt to go through. So we'll go ahead and take off all five of these 13 millimeter bolts, remove the spring clip, and then we can install our bracket. Now with our bracket removed, we can just use a flathead screwdriver to pry up on the spring clip and remove it from the bumper. Now we can go reinstall our mounting bracket. And then we're gonna use the supplied M8 by 40 millimeter long bolt with a flat washer on it to go through the front of the bumper for the one that we just took out, install our bracket. And you wanna make sure when you install this, looking at it from the front of the truck, that this upright bracket here is towards the outside of the truck. We'll put another flat washer on the back side, along with a nylock nut. And then you're gonna need a half inch wrench and a half inch deep socket to go ahead and snug this up. Now we're not gonna tighten it all the way down yet because we wanna leave room in there for adjustment when we put the actual brush guard on it. We'll leave a little bit of room in there so that we can adjust it for the brush guard. There you go. Now you can do the same thing for the other side of the bracket, the other side of the bumper. Our next step is going to be to place these double nut plates inside the frame where the tow hooks were at. Now go ahead and put them in there. And one of the things I like to do just to make sure that it's in the correct spot is go ahead and insert the two bolts now we'll be using the ones that come with the kit and these are the M12 bolts. So go ahead and just start the threads on them while they're in place. And then I like to use some tape just to hold them in place when we take out the bolts. Now we're getting ready to reinstall our bumper. We'll just take a piece of tape and you can lay this over the top of the nut just to make sure it doesn't move when we are reinstalling the bumper. Put one over the back as well. Now we'll go ahead and remove our two bolts. That'll just help keep it from pushing back when we put the bumper back on. Now you can repeat this same process for the other side, then we'll go ahead and install our bumper. Now if you've got a buddy that you can use to help put this back on, that's great. But I think you can do this by yourself. 
So let's go ahead and get our bumper mounted back up on the brackets. All right, now that we've got the bumper back on the truck, we can go ahead and get it adjusted, put back into place, make sure it's aligned correctly, and tighten it down with our 21 millimeter socket. Make sure it's where it needs to be. Then we'll go to the other side, do the same thing. And once you're sure that it's where it needs to be, go ahead and tighten down the other two nuts. And at this point, we can go ahead and put our plastic covers back on the front of the bumper. All right, now we can install our lower support brackets. And again, you wanna make sure that this vertical bracket piece here is towards the outside of the truck. Now, one other thing to note, each of these brackets are designated with a P or a D. So you know whether it's passenger or driver side. So now we're gonna use the M12 bolts with the lock washers and flat washers that are supplied in the kit to secure this to the double nut plate that we just taped in place a little bit earlier. Now you can do this for the other side as well. And remember, we're not tightening them down yet because we still need to put the brush guard onto the brackets. All right, now that we've got all of our brackets installed, now is the time where you're absolutely going to have to have a second pair of hands to help you lift this up and put it on the brackets. So we're going to lift this up and insert the bolts into the bottom brackets, and then we'll put the nuts on there, and then we can go ahead and adjust it and tighten it up. All right, now that we've got our lower support bolts put in, we can go ahead and install the last bolt on the upper bracket right here. So we'll just go ahead and line up our holes. And we'll insert our bolt with the flat washer here. And then we'll put a flat washer and the nylock nut on the other side. And repeat that process for the other side. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the two lower support brackets that are bolted to the bottom of the frame where the tow hooks used to be. And we're gonna be using our 18 millimeter socket and our impact gun on the front one, but we'll have to use a regular ratchet and socket on the rear one because we can't get the gun in there. Now you can do the same thing for the other side and get it tightened up as well. Since we're already underneath the truck from tightening up our lower support brackets, we'll go ahead and hook up our fog lights. So you've got the one over here on the right. We'll just push that up until it clicks. And then we've got the main harness right above the frame here. Go ahead and connect that. And now you can go ahead and plug in the driver's side fog light as well. Now we can go ahead and tighten up the two nuts on our lower support bracket here. And to do that, we're gonna need a 5 8 inch wrench and an 11 16 inch socket.
Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up our upper support bracket bolt, which is right behind this center crossbar here, using a half inch wrench and a half inch socket. And now you can repeat that whole process for the other side. And that wraps up our review and install of the Barricade Modular Extreme Heavy Duty Brush Guard for the 2015 to 2020 F-150 Excluding Raptor. Thanks for watching and remember, for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.